Our next storyteller is Anne Cristiano, and she uh, sort of collects antique wardrobes with the hope of the back of them evaporating, so that she can get to the back of them. <laughs> and uh, she's very hopeful about change and, and learning and is a full believer in Kaiser Sose. So if any of you have that in common with her, talk with her afterwards. It's a very specific belief that Anne holds that all of us have a, a secret wish for. Um, uh, so much mystery in Anne. So she works at the University of Florida um, in the College of Journalism. And she and her colleagues have done a lot of research on story and the power behind them and why we use them to connect to each other and with humanity. So that's kind of Anne's background and she is a phenomenal storyteller herself to boot. So here's Anne Cristiano. are fantastic parents and they um, they did have done all of the things that great parents are supposed to do one of my earliest memories of dad of course is him pushing me on my bike learning to ride and me saying are you still holding on and him saying of course I am and of course he wasn't and he was teaching me like good parents do that I could do it by myself I started dancing when I was 12. I had been taking uh, voice lessons and um, learning to go and sing in nursing homes and I was singing every weekend. And my mother was bragging about my amazing talent as a singer to an aunt who is an opera singer. And she says, oh my goodness, if she's as talented as you say, she'll ruin her fragile voice. You must stop her. Put her in dance. So my mother, being so protective of my obviously prodigious talent, uh, put me in ballet. So I went to ballet later than most kids start. I um, was a horrible 12-year-old. I was awkward in all the ways that 12-year-olds are awkward. And I had this idea that if I put my hair in pigtails, that nobody would know that I was like six years older than them. And <laughs> So, but my, my parents believed in me and they signed me up for as many classes as I could get to in a week and, and slowly I did actually get better and my teacher said, you know, I, I think she might have some potential. One night we went to see the Pennsylvania Ballet at the Mann Music Center and the School of Pennsylvania Ballet had a table set up and my dad went up to the table, he's like, my daughter is an amazing dancer, she should come to your school. <laughs> And then I said, well, we're having auditions soon. Give us your address. We'll send you a letter with the times. <sighs> on the bus, on the way home from school, I can make it. I can beat everybody home. I can get the mail first. <laughs> and I did. I was so afraid of embarrassing my parents. They believed in me so much, but I knew I was a terrible dancer. I didn't want them to have that moment when they saw me with all of the other kids that were actually really good and really talented. So I got home, opened the mailbox, found the letter, ran inside, shoved that puppy in the wastebasket like it was a bad report card and poured chili on it. <laughs> we're good. My dad called the school, he was mad. He's like, I never got the letter. <laughs> We'll send another one. <sighs> My dad calls him and he says, I, I don't know what's going on with you guys, but like we're not getting these. And they said, you know what? Why don't you just bring Aunt Elizabeth to the auditions? So, so we go, we get in the car, we go to Philadelphia, we go to school of Pennsylvania Ballet. My upper lip is sweating, like now. And, um, and I go into the audition with all these kids that are my age, and 
you know, it's like, it's actually not bad. I kind of hang back, but I'm like, okay, you know what? Like, maybe I could do this. And sure enough, a week later, my parents get the call. I'm in, and not only am I in, this is amazing, not only am I in, I'm in a class with kids my age. It's incredible. So uh, my parents, of course, are thrilled and, and commit fully to the School of Pennsylvania Ballet Experience. And we go down to Philadelphia every night. It's an hour drive each way. We spend four hours at the studio every night. I'm doing my uh, homework by a flashlight on the way home. And we do this for like two years. And my dad's so proud. They watch me. And I actually was getting better. There was a day in class when I did 16 perfect fuetes in front of my idol, Lupe Serrano. And yeah, that happened. Like that moment actually happened. So my dad said, you know, <clears throat> I heard that School of American Ballet is holding auditions. And I'm like, huh, great. And he said, you know, let me tell you. I know you think that you won't get in, and you're right, you probably won't get in. But you have to keep practicing for life's great moments. Think about what you would learn from being in that environment. Think what you would learn just from being there. Like, don't worry about whether you get in. Just go. Just try out. Just enjoy it. I'm like, okay. So up to New York we went into the School of American Ballet. I remember my heart being in my throat. I remember the waiting space where we all warmed up as they took us 10 by 10 into the um, auditions. And the person running the audition was no other than Alexandra Danilova, one of the original Balanchine ballerinas. And there we were, the 10 of us lined up against the bars, pointing our feet, doing developes, checking our porta bra, porta bra, and then they brought us into the middle of the room, they taught us a combination, and we did the combination. They thanked us, and we left. And I thought, wow, that's amazing. I've been on the floor of the School of American Ballet. I've seen Alexandra Danilova. Dad, you were right. That was a great experience. Mom, thank you. I'm so glad I did that. I learned so much. Thank you. Later that week, I, um, I got home from school and my mom said, we got a letter today from the School of American Ballet. You're in. You've been accepted. I'm like, what? <laughs> <laughs> they don't accept kids like me. They don't. They don't. And they're like, well, you know, magic happens sometimes. And so well, let's talk. And we did a lot of research to try to figure out how to actually make it possible for me to go. We were living in southeastern Pennsylvania. So how could we, we, we looked into, like, could I live with a family who had a kid there in New York? Or could we rent a room, my mom and I, and, and be there during the week while I attended classes and then come home on the weekend. And we finally, like, we explored all of these options and we just couldn't figure one out that was, was gonna work. And so we finally said, you know what, let's let somebody else have this space. But you know, I didn't accept that position for the rest of my life. I was like, you know what, I got into School of American Ballet. That is amazing. And there were so many moments in my life where I was like, I don't think I can do this, or I don't think I should do this. And I remember, remember, but I got into the School of American Ballet, like, maybe I can. Like, maybe I can do things that aren't possible. My parents um, recently moved from Pennsylvania here to Florida, and my dad did what dads do, and he put my shit in boxes and sent it to me as they, <laughs> they were like, I would get almost every day, there would be on the front step another box with, a, it would just be like stuff in a box with a French fold and our address scrawled on it. And yeah, I never knew what was gonna be in there. It was always something completely surprising and delightful. Sometimes it was something that was incredibly meaningful to me. And sometimes it was like the dress my sister wore to prom. <laughs> I just never knew. But one day, um, I, I came home and there was a box, I'm like a box. And I, um, I picked it up and this one is heavy. I'm like, hmm, it's in this box. So I carried it in and put it on the dining room table and pulled open the French fold and, um, and went through the papers. And it was all these papers from when I was a kid, like my school, my 4-H um, my 
evaluations, which were not strong, and my, um, my report cards, which were also, it's kind of amazing that I'm a college professor. I, I, <laughs> clearly, my uh, elementary school teacher had no idea what, how talented I was. Um, <laughs> um, but then, there, I found the letter. There's the letter, School of American Ballet. And you can tell that my mom opened this because, look at that, I mean, <laughs> that's, that's some skill. So, um, so I'm like, wow, this is so great. Here's the, and I'm holding the letter and I'm like, this is so great. I can't wait to share this with my daughters. Like, how am I gonna explain to my daughters what this means, like how can I, help? what would be the equivalent to them? My daughters are 13 and 11 and I, what would be the equivalent to them? So I'm like, girls! And I pull the letter out and I'm like, oh, yes, here it is. September 4th, dear applicant, thank you for attending the School of American Ballet audition for the 1986-87 school year. We are sorry to inf <laughs> inform you that at the present time, we are unable to accept your application to become a student at our school. <laughs> Dad? <laughs> so, um, hey, I, I got the, how you doing? Yeah, okay. I, um, yeah, I, I, got, I got the box. Yeah, thanks. Yeah, it's awesome. Yeah, thank you for doing that. I appreciate it. How's mom? Good. Okay. Um, hey, do you remember, did I audition for School of American Ballet just the one time? Yeah? Yeah? Okay. Okay, thanks. I thought about this a lot. <laughs> And at first I was, I, I was mad, like how, how could they have betrayed me like that for so long? How is it possible that I was allowed to believe something about myself that just wasn't true? That this thing that had been my source of strength for so long never happened? I ran across a study, in fact, about, because I'm really super nerdy about stuff like that, about how how um, parents really shouldn't be telling their kids about Santa and the Tooth Fairy and the Easter Bunny and all of those other things because when the kids find out, it will erode their trust in parents and pretty much everything. <laughs> <laughs> but I also think about all the things that I did because I believed that this had happened and all the things that I tried because I was so sure that I had already done something impossible. And I think that this lie that lasted just long enough until I had proved for myself that I actually could do some of those things may have been something that saved my life. It certainly changed it forever. So thank you, Mom and Dad. <laughs>